Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm the BMD, your host on Rogers Television Show, Channel 10, Meet the Band, and have an interesting guest here today, one that I've met recently, and uh, we thought it was uh, certainly a good thing to have him on. Sitting to my left, not beside me, but on my left to Zoom, is Scott Templeton. He is the owner and operator of Black Rose Entertainment and Promotions. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, sir, somewhere in the world. Uh, good evening. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Good, sir. So, Scott, a little different angle on what we normally do on Meet the Band, but uh, very curious at my uh, interest, and Lucas, of course, is... Give us a little bit of your background uh, to start the show. Tell uh, the audience who you are and what do you say, what do you know? Well, name is Scott Templeton. I've been uh, in the business industry or the music industry probably for, I think, since 2014 on, my, on our own with Black Rose Entertainment. Before that, I was with uh, uh, co another company uh, at 2010. Um, so me and my wife own the company. My wife's Christine, and uh, she does a lot of work in the background as well. Um, uh, we're, we're, what we do is we reach out and uh, to different theaters all across Ontario, but our, our home base is the uh, Oshawa Region Theater. Um, we probably put in 70% of the shows in there. So what I mean is we rent the theater. Um, we book a band, rent the theater, put on a show, and uh, bring live entertainment back to the world. So I want to develop into that. Uh, you jumped in ahead of me, which is great. How did you get started? Like, why why this business, the entertainment promotion business? Oh, man, we go all the way back to around 2010. I had this idea in my head to uh, create a festival at Mossport Park. And uh, unfortunately, the festival didn't transpire but uh we we're doing a whole lot of work and then uh i decided to continue in that path my background um i'm a network communications analyst and i was in that for 34 years i got bored because it is a boring job and uh i decided to try another challenge and this was a challenge um i love you know coercing with people and um entertaining them at the theater and with music and um other than that there's uh, i mean there i've always been involved in people I, I ran for a school board trustee in whitby i was elected i ran i sat for four years during our our wonderful COVID years and um we're still here but the worst part of COVID, and uh that was basically it getting into it was just a i worked for someone else for a bit she said you know what we can do this on our own. And we started our own company up and away we went. So the interesting side, how did you go from the analyst to the entertainment promotional side? Was it just a pet peeve? Uh, somebody approached you or you you weren't happy with what was being offered locally? Um, uh, It was basically a understanding between two other another person i decided working for their company uh their company's no longer here but i decided to go in and work with them and uh learn the business from the ground up and basically i've worked in the box office i i presented shows at a smaller theater i you know emceed at the smaller theaters for the for the shows coming in, uh, that were coming up uh, they were dinner shows and i thought i'd pursue it a little further and start heading into the region theater and other theaters across ontario so you mentioned your wife a husband and wife team which is certainly common uh can you tell us each other's duties just a brief wrap who does what well with uh i broke it down we both kind of do everything except for the i i pursue the bands uh, i do a lot of the uh, due diligence and grabbing the band making sure the dates are available and they're available for a date at the you know everything's got to be together um and 
through that period of time, we sit down and uh, we discuss our advertising plan for the show. Um, and um, Dave's show, she actually does most of the work, which is setting up all the green room. Because as you know, um, artists love to make sure they have a rider and they have a green room. And we want to make sure the hospitality and they're treated great. We treat every artist, whether it's April Wine or the show I just had on the weekend, Bad to the Bone, the same. Everybody's treated like, you know, a musician they should be treated like. They, you know, they, uh, they're doing a job. But them doing their job it makes my job easier by us doing our job it makes their job easier so so are there lots of requests for uh crazy standards or crazy give me ups can you can you share uh maybe some of in, that as in some of the uh, uh the hospitality and green room yeah um i guess the, the craziest one was jeremy haunt um we had him we didn't have him this year but we had him a, a couple of years back and on his rider, he has a red ping pong ball, <laughs> and there is a there's logic behind it though, because we asked him about it. And the red ping pong ball is so he knows that you're following the rider and providing everything on the rider properly. So, so it it there is logic behind his thinking. So, but we don't get any of the crazy ones, you know, red M and M's and green M and M's. No, none of those. So who who pursues the talent? How do you know? I know you're across Canada and uh, Ontario and that. How do you know what venue? Sorry, I asked it wrong. How do you know what act is good for the venue related to the audience interest or the community? Well, if you uh, this is where this is where all the uh, cities come in. Um, they have a demographic uh, breakdown. Of their area, I actually go into the demographics. I go into each city, go into the demographic, take a look at their analysts that they have, and then I could figure out what um, what age group the band would work into or demographic. Or um, so there's a little bit of work involved, and then you can figure out which theater you want to put a band, like the traveling uh, Millberries. Uh, which is coming up. April wine. April wine can go anywhere. That's a bad example. Uh, <laughs> but you have certain bands like the older generation, you're usually finding between age 50 to 65 plus. And when you go and look at the demographic and the area has 64% of those people, well, <laughs> you're going in with the older shows. Those are the ones that are selling. Okay. Now, I noticed you've had on different things, you've had uh, kids venues, you've had tribute venues and original artists. Does that go part of the area demographics or you just offer lots of flavors? We like to, well, we offer lots of flavors because we don't just do uh, bands. We do com uh, comedians and um, uh, the odd time we have uh, an improv coming up, Girls Night Out on Thursday. Um, for example, just knowing, just knowing the area, uh, and figuring out what the bands are. Um, most of these people I talk to on the phone, I understand where they're coming from. And, uh, some of them will work at the region theater. Some of them might, you know, some of them at different theaters, but I like to give everything a chance. Um, I think our biggest, the biggest draw in all these bands are, People want to be entertained right now, and you. But you've got to bring in something proper. Um, I do a mixture of comedy, tribute acts, and originals for a region because, or for a reason. And I don't want to be known as the inter or the. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I, for uh, for just bringing in tribute bands. Uh, we want to be known as an entertainment company that expands and we bring in a variety of everything. Uh, that's that's basically where we go with a lot of shows. So like I have Sean Mijumner up in uh, Midland, Ontario this year at Cultural or on the 27th at the Cultural Center. So, um, you know, we have improv on Thursday this coming on the night uh, on October 19th. So um, we have everything coming up this 
shortly, April wine, from April wine to um, Joplin meets Hendrix to um, the girls night out. So yeah, we, we expand everywhere. We even bring in children's show. We had splash and boots last year and we're actually looking at bringing them in again this year uh, or next year, February family day weekend at um, Oshawa little theater. Mm -hmm. on Meet the Band with the BMD. I uh, was fortunate to meet you uh, when I was uh, asked to help out with the Maple Blues Band on introducing that band. We had a great interview with uh, Gary Kendall. And uh, when I announced that the show was brought to you by black rose entertainment it got a tremendous cheer out of the crowd so the flavors of entertainment you're bringing through the regent uh must be agree uh, agreeable to your supporters because uh it wasn't a standing ovation but everybody i think reacted so how are you getting around town uh it's got to be more than word of mouth how do they know about uh black rose entertainment well, um, like I said, we we started uh, Black Rose Entertainment. We used to be called Black Rose Durham Entertainment because we were only doing shows in Durham. So we changed our name to Black Rose Entertainment Canada. Um, what we've been doing it is there is a lot of word of mouth, uh, but social media does wonders. Um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh you name it, we're we're out there all over the place. People sharing our our sharing pictures that we end up putting up, um, commenting on our shows and everything. Um, but you know, honestly, the biggest advertising tool is uh, word of mouth for most people. Because somebody else, tell, there'll be one person that comes out. Like if I brought the maple, you saw the maple band, maple blues band, which was, I mean, it wasn't the strongest audience, but it was a great audience. Um, if I brought them back next year, that audience is going to probably double or triple. That that's just word of mouth from the people that were there and how great mm -hmm. these, these this, that band was. So that's been working for us for a long time. We bring a band in, yeah, they get they sometimes they get 190, 210, and I bring them back a year and a half later, and it, it doubles. So mm -hmm. it, it is word of mouth from the people that are out there and. And I believe at this point, I'm taking big advantage of the um, uh, the Facebook, social, all the social media platforms that are out there. Um, obviously, we're not going to have a newspaper anymore. So, uh, you know, I did a little bit of newspaper ads, but hey, I just take that money and put it into social media. Um, most of the people I know, uh, our audience, Jonder at the Regent Theater is always it's it's probably forty to sixty five plus. So um, when you start going into those areas, uh, digital advertising online just won't work. And a lot of them aren't on. Like a lot of them don't follow. They don't not going to go to DurhamRegent.com to follow stuff. A lot of people do, but you know, you're we're still not up at the platform where uh, social media or uh, digital 
advertising online um, catches enough people. I know they say they have a big audience, but I, when I've done it before by themselves, I've, I've, I've run different ad campaigns just to see how uh, the responses for each different platform. So I won't do, I'll do a Facebook once just on something and then I'll stop. I'll do a newspaper on another show and the other one I'll do uh, like a, a radio ad and just to see what my hits are like. Uh, I watch ticket sales. That's how you, um, that's how you judge it. And the other one is uh, seeing how many people go to your website. So all, all those platforms direct to blackroseentertainment.ca. So, do you have a, di- a down time of the year seasonally, or are you um, hot in the summer and colder in the winter, just like the weather? That is kind of, but in, in the summer we um, we try to take July and August off as a company, um, unless there's a really big band coming in and I can get it booked for July or August date. I will do that, but uh, there's so many, many free festivals out there that I'm not going to compete with free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how do you uh, how do you find your acts? Like, are you what? in a, a a bigger uh, bigger circle of uh, of the uh, with the agents or their talent people or something? Can you maybe explain well, to the viewers that? Yeah, a lot of the agents uh, i go to their website and i'll look at all the acts but a lot of the agents now have been reaching out to us and sending us shows that are coming up and our shows uh acts that are going on tour and then they're they're here can you make an offer on some of these shows so uh the big agencies like feldman and pac win and uh sakamoto they're they've been coming to us lately and uh asking us if we didn't want to present some of their shows uh now, when you're going into the tributes, what happened with tributes, it's a different world, it, a big different world. Um, a lot of it, uh, these musicians that play for tribute uh, for the tribute bands, they're like, they're amazing. They're all professional musicians. They are amazing uh, artists. And, um, you know, I get, I get upset when people say, well, it's a tribute band. A tribute band is four guys that are playing music of the original artist pretty much note for note and uh you know what they put on a show just they just love that artist music that they do that artist that's why they that's why they perform because they love that artist music but what happens is with those artists now the tribute artists they'll contact hey i've got a, a friend of mine's got this band and this one and this one so i've actually i think we brought in I think we brought in about six or seven different bands just from word of mouth from the other artists that are on stage. And then uh, I check them out online and I talk to them on the phone. And, you know, they often hey, come on, we're going to be playing here. Come on out and check us out. Um, and it's, it's when you check them out at other venues, uh, I like to check people. I like to check out artists when they're playing in theater. Because going to a bar is different. You're not sound gonna hear, wise, right? Sound wise, you're not going to hear the same sound as you hear in a theater. Yeah. So a lot of the, a lot of the tribute bands now have a demo that they've done recorded at a theater, so you actually get to hear the actual sound of that band. And uh, we choose a lot of bands that way too. You know, so, it's funny uh, how I got into your uh, view. You not knowing me, uh, my wife bought me uh, a pair of tickets for her and I for the Queen tribute uh, a while back there. And I was absolutely blown out on what you just said about not only the quality, uh, but the get up, uh, you know, the guy looking like uh, Freddie Mercury and the other, the other uh, band members looking in character close to the original artist and then the music was yeah. dead on and the only odd time you could hear a little different voice out of the lead singer but the act was sensational and great value uh for the dollar and i remember speaking to lucas my producer i said wow we just were over at the region couldn't get over 
the excitement on how new uh, the building looked inside, the comfort, the easy in, easy out, and then the music, to your point, okay, you're never going to see Freddie Mercury again. Uh, he's dead. But for that brief moment, you're kind of frozen in time and glued in. And, you know, they were a fabulous, fabulous act. So I'm a full, full green, uh, full thumbs up on the, the tribute band concept. Yeah. It's, I thought it was fabulous. So I think you're doing wonders there, uh, certainly on that. And then how tough is it from the tribute to get the original acts? Um, well, if you, uh, basically money talks, so ah. <laughs> you pay the artist properly, you're going to get them. Okay. Um, you know, you don't, there's a lot of, there's a lot of promoters out there that'll go and yeah, I want that show and I'll give you this much money and yet they're worth this much money and they try to undercut them all the time. Ask, ask the bands, they'll all tell you the same thing. The original artist, everybody tries to undercut cut them what we try to do is come to a uh, a proper solution for the situation where we're talking to them and a lot of the times they like our offer we always offer something worthwhile for them they uh we we follow the writer pretty much to the t sometimes we cross some things off because um in a lot of the theaters around ontario uh people are licensed to the front of the stage for for alcohol and backstage you're not allowed and some of the artists do like the the beer after the show um you can't get it because it's not covered right you're not insured if they walk out i mean anybody can get in trouble if they're they drink too much and they walk out getting an accident well you know that's on that's that's on us um, and the theater so uh so we try get do you get lots of offers during the week? Uh, are you bombarded by emails and phone calls about uh, what do you think yeah. of this? Yeah, I just had, uh, actually, I just had two emails come in before this, for this interview. And uh, it, <laughs> uh, it was from, uh, for a couple of shows, Glass Tiger and uh, the traveling, uh, the Canadian traveling Millberries. So the Trans Canada men, they're called. Uh, that's with Stephen uh, Page and uh, Murphy from Sloan. So they have a group together. So those two just came in to me this morning, and uh, so now I have to figure out. I, I got to get back to them with you know a couple of offers and figure out where we're going to go. Uh, but yeah, we get uh, a lot of emails. I'll be sitting at a show and I'll get emails. Uh, they just start coming in. So I mean, it's interesting because I use. I use Facebook live a lot at the shows. So um, when you're doing something like that, but we're going back to your agents, they they come in all the time now. Um, it's regularly coming in. You know, doesn't matter what day of the week, what time of the week, they come in. So interesting. Your bio mentioned you're very strong on community values and yep. community views what uh where did that come from on some of your uh your donations uh some of the uh the uh community things you're sponsoring where did obviously from your heart but where did that come uh geez i've been doing you know what um i just do <laughs> since i mean since high school i just do i, I mean I was in so all many uh, charity groups trying to raise money for different organizations and things along those lines. I was a member of the uh, Whippy Lions. Uh, I was, uh, I'm a member of the 100 Men of Oshawa, which is a really interesting uh, group because we have 100 men of Oshawa, 100 men, and we do a meeting. Um, and what we actually do is everybody donates $100 when they come to that meeting. So a certain charity that's picked um, because people put their name, charities put their name in that's picked, they could walk out with $10,000 that night for their charity. It's, it's a great organization. You get a chance to talk to somebody, talk to them. They're really good. Um, but it's just in my background. I've been doing it forever. So it's, to me, it's, 
it, it's, I like to call it spreading the wealth a bit. Um, call me a philosopher, whatever you want. Um, but what we, I like to do is I'll take a look at a show and say, hey, you know what? This show will work out perfectly because it's going to bring a lot of people in. And if we take $2 out of every ticket and donate it to that charity, they're, they're, they have a possibility of getting at the Regent Theater. They have a possibility of getting $1,200, right? So and that $1,200 goes a long way. Oh, yeah. you, you, you do that at the food bank, that's, that's, you're feeding a lot of people. Final thing, how can people connect with you on your social media? Well, they can, uh, the best way is going through Facebook, uh, Black Rose Entertainment Canada. Look us up. You'll find us there. We do have a website with all the links to it at blackroseentertainment.ca. So uh, if you go to blackroseentertainment.ca, you'll also see all our shows coming up. But you also have an opportunity to just go into Facebook and follow and everything else. As a matter of fact, we just went over, um, taking a while, but uh, we just went over four thousand uh followers on our page excellent well scott listen it's been wonderful we are out of time i hope you enjoyed the interview did you yes it was great good good. well folks thanks for listening and watching you have been listening and watching the bmd i'm the host of meet the band on rogers television and we were blessed to have scott templeton with us he's the owner and operator of black rose entertainment and promotion and we met at the region theater i'd recommend everybody follow those social media ids and get out there and what we do scott is if you're happy tell a friend see you next time folks the bmd here on my show meet the band if you or your group would like to be a guest on the show email us at the bmd podcast at gmail.com see you then